Happy Friday! Welcome to your weekend edition of Locked On Raptors. Sean here with you as always. And on today's show, it is All-Star Weekend, and so we are going to preview the Raptors side of things. Fred Van Vliet's in the three-point contest, Scotty Barnes in the Rising Stars, and the Skills Challenge presses Achua in the Rising Stars as well. How will they fare? Will Fred Van Vliet make good on being the Vegas favorite to win the three-point contest? Plus, what should Pascal Siakam be doing with his week off? We will ask those questions and more from the listeners in a mailbag edition of the podcast with Katie Heindel. That's all coming up in just one second. You are Locked On Raptors, your daily Toronto Raptors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to episode number 1122 of Locked On Raptors for Friday, February the 18th. I'm your host, Sean Woodley of RaptorsHQ.com. You can find me on Twitter as always, at WoodleySean. You can find the show at Locked On Raptors. And of course, you can subscribe to, follow, rate, review the podcast on all your favorite podcast platforms for the low, low price of on the house you can also check out the youtube channel for locked on raptors and go hit that big fat red subscribe button it's very big you can't miss it when you go to the locked on raptors youtube page please go and subscribe we've got over 1600 satisfied customers uh, join the ranks why don't you uh and as always a big thank you for making us your first listen of the day all right on today's show we have a mailbag episode to get to a couple of good questions came in but i also have a couple of questions i want to post to today's guest about all-star uh, Katie Heidel, can you feel the uh, all-star vibes emanating from Cleveland? It's just rock and roll music just <laughs> going across yeah. the continent ahead of the all-star festivities this weekend. How are you? I'm good. I have to be honest. I feel my FOMO settling in a little mm. bit um, as yeah. I see the handful of people who made it, who braved the Cleveland cold. <laughs> uh, getting their weird swag bags, you know, um, and going to the strange pop up events that All Star brings. But yeah, I, I think it's going to be a good weekend. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. So there are some Toronto Raptors involved. We are going to take a look at Fred Van Vliet, who is the Vegas favorite per our friends at Bet Online to win the three point contest. We'll examine that, talk about the skills challenge. But I do want to begin with a man who is not at All Star Week. And it seemed like at some point this week he might get the call. You know, Zach Levine going to be playing. Is Fred Van Vliet even going to be playing with the the thing he the knee he that was keeping him up this week? Uh, obviously, Jared Allen was named the injury replacement for James Harden. Uh, Pascal Siakam not named an injury replacement, and instead will get a well deserved, I guess, like nine days off or thereabouts. So, Katie, as our resident summer vacation <laughs> expert, I have to ask you. A, what kind of importance do you place upon All-Star Week vacation? And what do you think Pascal should be doing with this time off after having played 40 minutes a night for seemingly the last three months? I mean, Pascal's actually in the best and most ideal position, I would say, for uh, the short All-Star break vacations mm -hmm. because he's got nine days you know it's not yeah. like he's got it like a lot of guys will go leave from all-star right so they'll mm -hmm. do their event they'll do the media that they have to do if they have any spawn con on the side they'll do that and then they'll take off <laughs> for like a pretty truncated vacay but pascal gets like a nice long leisurely stretch so i feel like he should just go somewhere hot and get some sun mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would be a, a welcome thing for him to the, the, get that warm air, the humid air, mm -hmm. refreshing his muscles and bones. <laughs> I feel like, you know, it's very brittle up here Some in, rest. in Toronto. It's been a yeah. cold winter. Yeah, yeah. it's been um, a cold winter, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of different kinds of weather, even within the last 24 hours. So he should escape that, uh, go south, sit on like a day bed, like a cabana bed <laughs> for nine days. Why not? Yeah. He also has a history of uh, plucking enormous starfish from the sea. Maybe that's something he can go and rekindle. Mm -hmm. uh, it seemed like a good time when he did that. Yeah, he likes to lounge ago. on the front of a boat. He's right, done that right. plenty of times, too. So I'd love to see that again. He's got some good shorts, this guy. Yeah. He's kind of in the perfect situation, honestly, because like he 
is widely regarded as now the biggest all-star snub. And so people will probably remember that more than they would have if he was just like the last guy named to the all-star team. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's not like Mike Conley where he had the sympathy ad. He's already been an all-star. He'll be an all-star again. And now he just gets to enjoy a week of not having to go to Cleveland and, uh, you know, do extracurricular media and whatnot. So happy for Pascal Siakam. I hope he gets to relax. With that, let's turn our attention to Fred Van Vliet, shall we? He's in the three-point contest this weekend, Katie. Uh, as I noted, Bet Online currently has him as a favorite to win the three-point contest at plus 400. Uh, I have to pull up the full roster uh, of contestants, but he is the fave. What do you think? Uh, is that a fair assessment? Are you concerned that maybe the expectations are a little bit high? He's followed closely by Patty Mills at plus 425, along with Trey mm -hmm. Young in the same. Luke Kirk fourth, plus 550. Desmond, Zach Levine, CJ McCollum, Carl Anthony Towns rounding out the one through eight uh, list of favorites. Uh, how are you feeling about Fred? I have my thoughts here. I'm a little bit concerned, honestly. I don't know if I would have had him as the favorite, but what, what do you think? Are, are you high on Fred's chances of taking home three point contest glory this weekend? Well, I get, I get like in the mind that if someone is said to be the favorite, it's kind of like a jinx, right? Yeah. 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 So I'm a bit, maybe a little bit worried about that. <laughs> um, but in terms of like the field of competition, I've got mm -hmm. faith in Fred. Yeah, I think, look, of these guys, I would say he's probably just like the best pure shooter. I mean, Patty Mills has been pretty insane this season, but Fred's mm -hmm. numbers have been ridiculous. His catch and shoot numbers are insane. I guess you equate the picking the ball off the rack more to a catch and shoot than to a pull up, or, or do you? I don't know. What is a picking the ball off the rack a pull up shot or a catch and shoot shot, Katie? Uh, we need to know this for synergies purposes. <laughs> I guess it can be either. It's like how you you can get it and then you could like mimic that you've like caught it and mm -hmm. then go through your shooting the act of shooting that way mm -hmm. or you could do you could set back and do your kind of i guess you could do a pull up <laughs> i don't know <laughs> it's a new category it's a new it's like the mountain dew extreme <laughs> shooting <laughs> they, they need that green. column just in bright yeah. green on nba.com slash stats mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh yeah I, the thing that i'm worried about with fred is that his shot is so high arcing that i'm worried about time for him like i feel like he's gonna have to get into a rhythm where he's putting up his next shot before the previous one even goes in otherwise mm -hmm. time's gonna be a concern because there's so much hang time on that ball um is, is that something that, that you're worried I've about I've seen that. I have seen yeah. that. But you're right. Like it is, it is like getting into a rhythm. But the tricky thing is, is as simple as it looks. And I know you've got your qualms with a three point competition. Um, mm -hmm. They almost listen to, have to uh, get... basketball to get my full thoughts on the three point competition this week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they almost have to get in a new rhythm, right? At like each position around the key. Mm -hmm. And you can see that the guys that get it, you can see it, you know, by the second, some mm -hmm. like third shot for sure. Um, I think Fred will under like will get a pretty good idea of like how quick he can be releasing this the second, the third, whatever, like the sequential shots after. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would look pretty cool if they were like assuming they're all making it and they weren't just going ping, like <laughs> pinging out, ping. <laughs> and then he's got some busy um ball ball retrieving personnel on his hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm uh, I'm optimistic. I'm a little, uh, you know, I'm not going to, I don't think he's necessarily the guy I'm like putting all my, mm -hmm. uh, my chips on if I'm throwing down money. Also, it's probably not like the best bet odds wise. Excuse me if you're going to do that. Uh, God, my coffee is just uh, battling my throat. Uh, I think I'm probably going to pick Desmond Bain to win this one. He kind of seems like he'll really try and he shoots really well. And I think he kind of shoots quicker, a little bit more quick trigger. Uh, but this should be a lot of fun. Let's also spin our attention quickly to the skills challenge. Uh, you've got the uh, Antetokounmpo brothers uh, who are all taking part to Nasus along with Alex and Giannis. Of course, you've got the three Cavs, Garland, Mobley, and Allen. And then you've got Josh Giddy, uh, is it Cade Cunningham and Scotty Barnes on the rookie team for the skills challenge. Remember, this is like they go through progressions of different skills. So it's like a shooting drill, a dribbling drill, a passing drill. And the final drill is a hit a half court shot. Uh, are you optimistic about the young spry rooks led by Scotty Barnes taking down the Antetokounmpo's as well? Antetokounmpo, 
<laughs> what's the plural of that? I'm not sure. And then the Cavs, uh, how are you feeling? I honestly feel pretty good about the Rooks because I think their skill set is actually a little bit more well-rounded than these other teams. But uh, what say you? I feel pretty good about the Cavs. Um, mm. The rookies, I think, will be good. Um, yeah, it's gonna. It's like a, a very interesting. It's an interesting format, but mm -hmm. I think um, I have to also say I think that because it's you know this it's different skills, Sean, and I feel mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. most of the teams are pretty balanced in terms of who is better at which skill. You know, you've got your great ball handlers, you've got your quick you know, kind of quick shooters. There's a passing. You've got your good passers. Mm -hmm. So as long as it's like they they wait that out equally and figure it out between themselves, this could be a real uh, height of the Taco Bell skills challenge. <laughs> I, I love the skills challenge. I'm glad they've revamped it and refreshed it and added some excitement to it because I think it's the lost and unheralded part of All-Star Saturday Night. Uh, I am pretty worried about the Antetokounmpo's. I'm not going to lie. Alex is a G League player. Thanasis is a guy who comes in and just like punches stuff. And <laughs> like Giannis, I feel like might be doing a lot of the heavy lifting in that one. And I mean, he's Giannis, so maybe he can do it on his own. But I think I'm going to like Josh Giddy is going to be good at the passing ones. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to go with the Rooks as my pick here. But the, the Cavs are a pretty noble second choice. I think Giannis and his brothers might have some trouble uh with that katie we're gonna pivot into a couple of mailbag questions heading into all-star weekend a couple all-star related a couple not and uh we will round out your show with that but first want to tell you about our friends over at betonline.ag football might be over this season but basketball is in full steam both on the pro and college sides and from the latest odds totals player performance props to where the next fo fired coach is going to land BetOnline.net is your number one spot for all your sports betting needs. It remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And again, it's not just basketball, too. You've got BetOnline.net uh, covering all things like hockey and boxing and UFC odds right to your favorite Olympic coverage as well. And as I mentioned, you can go to BetOnline and find some odds for the all-star events. Fred Van Vliet, my plus 400 to win the three-point contest head to the website today use your mobile device and sign up and uh, learn more about the trends and the action bet online is where the game starts and we continue on with your first list of the day here with katie heindel digging in to a couple of mailbag questions that came in from the good people out there uh the first question i really really like this one this comes from we'll pivot away from all-star for a sec we'll come back to all-star at the end but this one comes from eric morris at epic Moppus, regular great question asker on the podcast he asks what are your ideal play-in playoff matchups for the raptors not necessarily based on easiest path but more like who'd you take the most joy in if the raptors ended their seasons this is fun get a little sports hate going katie uh <laughs> which which teams are you most thrilled about the concept the idea of the Raptors ending their season, either in the play-in or in the postseason. Uh, let's just we'll, we'll, let's hone into your first, but we can go through a couple of different fun options as well. Honestly, um, though this is a little bit like tempting fate, I think they would just have a really different outcome than the last time they played them in a playoff situation. But the Celtics, because I think maybe mm. the Raptors could finally, it finally seems like they've got the legs to get past them. You know mm -hmm, what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're off course, less one Kyle Lowry. But I think in some ways that works to the Raptors' advantage because it's a totally different team now. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the Raptors could run them off. I don't know how much farther they get, but I think they could do pretty well against the Celtics if they keep hanging around um, the bottom the bottom of the East as well. Well, the middle bottom. <laughs> the, <laughs> the soft, gooey middle. Uh, the yeah. favorite, everyone's favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got to say, it really pains me to say it, I'm pretty terrified of the Celtics right now. Their defense is ridiculous and more or less impenetrable. Derek White has added like a whole new uh, sort of level of mayhem to their defense that is just uh, really, really tough to like figure how you're going to get through it, right? Like it's just they switch everything. Robert Williams is flying around like a maniac. You got Tatum playing really well again. Brown's playing really well. Like it's just, I, I, I do think. Like, their offense is not awesome. They're, like, kind of flirting with bottom 10. Their defense is what's been kind of driving them. But 
like in a playoff series, I don't like the idea of just like Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum getting to do their thing in sort of turn and then they kind of go back on defense. It just feels like they might have the juice in a playoff series. That said, I mean, the Raptors have a, a bunch of defenders they could throw at Tatum and Brown and hopefully kind of uh, force the ball out of their hands and into the hands of Derek White or Marcus Smart. Of course, Marcus Smart has a habit of hitting nine threes a game whenever he plays the Raptors and uh, no threes a game against everybody else. So that's certainly a concern. I don't like that Daniel Tice is back on that team. I got bad memories of that dude from the bubble. It's, uh, it's a good, concerned. it's a good opportunity to like it exercise is. all these demons, especially it for is. you. It sounds like. Yeah. I mean, for all of those reasons, I think you're right and that it would be the most satisfying. Mostly, you know, I think beating the Celtics is always satisfying, but considering what happened in the bubble a couple of years ago, obviously a completely different team, but uh, it would be extremely, extremely enjoyable to see it happen. I I'm curious as to why you didn't say the Nets, um, because I don't know, I, I find a lot of joy just in the concept of ending the chaotic, weird Nets season. And ideally, it's in a 7-8 play-in game where Kyrie can't play in Toronto because of vaccine laws. And I think that would be really, really funny as a way for the Nets to go down. Uh, are, are you similarly intrigued by that idea? Or is it more of a, all right, like they're they're this sad, broken team. They're, like they're clearly kind of repositioning themselves for next year anyway. Is it like a little bit too much of like kicking them while they're down type of thing if the Raptors were to take them down and end their season? I don't think they're sad and broken. I just literally forgot about the Nets, which is something <laughs> I've been doing all season. Honestly, um, mm -hmm. even before the trade deadline, I maybe actually don't want to because Seth Curry uh, and Patty Mills together, that's, mm. uh, that's some good shooting. I right. feel like the yeah. Raptors could actually get in a hole pretty quick against those guys. Um, that's true. Also, I don't feel the kind of like vehement. I'm not like, I don't need to kick the nets while they're down, but I also don't think they're down that bad. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, they'll be fine. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is like uh, rich people problems. Like, oh, no, my caviar was a little bit too warm. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, that's, I think, why it would be so nice is like being part of the Nets not winning a title in this era, I think it is always an inherent good. Uh, like, I just they're a really easy team for me to dislike. And I am cool to lean into that further. There's a couple really intriguing ones here, Katie. I think all of the potential first round matchups are very juicy, like assuming the Raptors get through the play in. Um, you know, I, I think there's some really kind of uh, interesting storylines. Obviously, you would have the potential with the Bucks. You're probably not beating the Bucks, but it would be damn satisfying if you did because of the history of beating the Bucks in the postseason and making them cry. Uh, you've got the Cavs, who obviously don't have the boogeyman LeBron, who uh, tormented them for the entirety of the last decade. But they're this sort of new version of the Cavs that I think is kind of going to end up being one of those adversary teams to this Raptors group for the next little while. Here you've got the Barnes-Mobley rivalry brewing. Both teams really interesting. I am pretty, you know, intrigued by the idea of that matchup, although I think it would be more just like a fun basketball nerd fest as opposed to it being some sort of, uh, you know, adversarial, like, hate-filled well, series. Well, that was the question, right? Everyone's happy to be here. Yeah. I think that uh, it could be pretty entertaining to watch the Raptors and the Cavs play, but I don't actually think the Raptors um, have a great chance <laughs> against <laughs> See, that team. I See, that I find interesting because I think of all the teams in the upper crust of the East, the Cavs are the team I would be the most comfortable with the Raptors playing, I think. I, I'm most comfortable with the Bulls, honestly, which I think that's has also just like a good one. borne out. Yeah. I mean, that would be a great series, but I think that's yeah. also borne out to be true in the regular season thus far, mm -hmm. though mm -hmm. DeMar DeRozan would certainly be out to prove um, something. So yeah, maybe that wouldn't be a great thing. <laughs> One of two things is happening in a potential Raptors Bulls series. Either the playoff demons of the past rear their ugly head for DeMar once again, and the Raptors are vindicated anew for their decision to move on from him five years ago or whatever the hell it was. That's so uh, sad. Or <laughs> it is very sad. Or he does the thing that I expect will happen where he is playoff proof and absolutely rips the throat set of the Raptors as some mm -hmm. sort of revenge tour. That's what I think would be the more likely outcome, considering how he's played this season and where his game is advanced to. Um, so I, I think I'm leaving the Bulls off as like, because I'm, I don't know if it would be satisfying to see that happen, right? Because I think that's the only path for the Raptors to beat the Bulls if things or if things go really poorly for Demar, and I don't want to see that for Demar. So I think they're off my list. What about the Heat? 
would you find any gratification? I know you're a Heat stan at this point, uh, and obviously Kyle Lowry and Jimmy Butler and uh, PJ Tucker have a, a big piece of your heart. Would there be any satisfaction if you were to see the Raptors undo the the Heat and take them down uh, as they you know are, are title favorites, contenders in the East right now? Like they're really, really good. Um, no, that would be the opposite. I think of what this question was asking for me. <laughs> that would be joyless. Yeah. I just, I mean, I don't want to see that series at all. The regular season matchups were a total grind and miserable, and I, and I they just make you feel like your guts are uh, bubbling out. It's just not fun. So, yeah, I don't really want to see that either. I don't want the Raptors to have any sort of role in any sort of diminished postseason reputation for either Demar or Kyle. Uh, I'm sure if those series happen, we'll get caught up in it, and they'll be interesting and fun. But I'm hoping for something else uh the sixers i don't really I, I, okay that's the last team that we can kind of go through here would that be satisfying at all beating the six yeah i think it would be actually series? it might be the now that i'm thinking way. about it it might be kind of <laughs> awesome <laughs> it might be kind of amazing if they were to take down james like james harden goes like two of 11 as he's often want to do in, in big time series joel Embiid gets stonewalled by kem birch as though he's the new marcus Saul. Or maybe Thad Young is the new Marcus Saul. He's very strong, you see. Um, yeah, I, that might be top of my list. Taking down the Sixers, ruining the process, and like Daryl Morey's you know, big triumph uh, would be pretty awesome. Anyway, that was a great question, Eric. Thank you for sending it in. We're going to continue on. we got one more all-star related question to get to on the other side of the break. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at Built Bar. Built Bar makes the best tasting protein bars money can buy you can go and check them out and check out all their amazing flavors they've got everything that you might you might want they got the regular bars they got built boost they've got the marshmallow puffs as well in delicious flavors like cinnamon churro and coconut marshmallow and banana cream pie they're so good they're going to be your new fave if you're not uh already sort of married to one of the the regular built bars and maybe that's your fave and you're going to stand by that for the rest of time that's the beauty of it everyone has a favorite at built bar because there's so much choice so many options most bars contain 130 calories four grams of sugar four grams of net carbs and 17 grams of protein compare that with your run-of-the-mill candy bar which has at minimum 240 calories 30 grams of sugar and dozens of net carbs that is a lot of freaking sugar. That's like eight times more sugar than a built bar thereabouts, if my math is correct, which is, I suppose, a dubious proposition. Either way, go check out Built Bar. They are amazing and they are going to help you get that sort of indulgent feel without actually being indulgent and treat your body like crap. Go to built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15, and get 15% off your order. That's the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. And we are here to round out your first listen of the day here on Locked on Raptors with Katie Heindel. And we've got one more mailbag question to get to. This one comes from Jay Rosales, our pal, regular question asker from the Wrap Up podcast at Raptors HQ. Yes, are there any failed All-Star Weekend events that you wish made a comeback, i.e. horse shooting stars, celebrity games with more than two people that you know? Uh, <laughs> any particular faves of the All-Star Weekend that you would like to uh, bring back to the festivities, Katie? Honestly, the celebrity game could go away. Yeah. I think that's probably like the least now relevant and almost interesting, maybe watchable you know, uh, event. So if you're going to get rid of the celebrity game, I really liked um, Pandemic Horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I I don't know why. I really enjoyed that event. So yeah, mm -hmm. you could bring that one back. Um, what about like one-on-one? -on -one? I like one-on-one. -on -one. They did that, I think. Did they not? Like, I remember there well, was like Well, this is a... about bringing it back. So yeah, yeah. Maybe we bring I, I... back one-on-one. -on -one. I would like that. That would be fun. They like pre-taped the one-on-one, -on -one, if I'm not mistaken, and just like aired it no, as like a special. Live. Yeah, I, I agree. It should be live. Yeah. 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 Um, I would like the idea of doing horse, but instead of horse, you got to bring back Paul Pierce, of course, who was part of that horse game during the pandemic. But instead of horse, it's turkeys is the game you're playing with Paul Pierce. You, you recall? <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do you understand the reference mm -mm, Sean, you lost me remember when paul pierce was in his house and was very happy with all of the nice ladies from the turkeys uh who he was hanging out with last week last oh. year before getting fired by espn oh. uh <laughs> some people might uh yeah for me i mean shooting stars is always a fave for me i i really wish that would come back you get the wnba 
uh, connections. You get the alumni connections. I, I think those that's a really fun one. And you get like weird juggernaut teams like the Chris Bosch led team that won like four years in a row. I think that's really cool. As far as like, I wonder if there's new events. Have you concocted any new events you would like to have be part of All Star, Katie? Like, is there anything that is like uncovered ground when it comes to basketball and games around which you can in infuse a basketball to uh, bring into All Star? I would maybe expand the dunk contest to be two nights, so you yeah. have more people in it, and so you sure. have like you have your um, basically like the first round could be the semifinals. Mm -hmm. Cause like, or no, it would just be like first rounds then finals. So mm -hmm. you'd have like a larger field of dunkers, um, you know, really elaborate dunks would be encouraged. And then out of those dunkers, you'd pick four and they'd move oh. on to the, the second night. Um, and then they'd have to like come up with a whole new roster. Maybe there's like a certain, no, you know, like I know you love to make to, I know you love to like make new rules for old perfect things. <laughs> so I don't really need to like I, I wouldn't be like, oh, everyone has to do a 360 dunk or something like that. Sure. I, I sure. would still leave it wide open, but right. I would just basically this is an excuse to um, make that contest longer and, and make it happen twice and to see more people involved. Mm -hmm. Now you've got me thinking dunk horse. No. Like, no? Okay, that's <laughs> no. fine. Uh, <laughs> Just like people who are seven feet tall doing dunks that mere six foot three do, impossibly, like it's impossible for them mm. to do. And so they've kind of figured out the system. No. Uh, so, on the note of dunk contests, when they had the All Star game in Toronto in 2016, the G League showcase was also going on in Toronto, or the G League All Star game. Mm -hmm. And in the Enter Care Center, or the Rico Coliseum, or whatever the hell the Marlies play in, uh, they had on the Friday of All Star weekend, the G League dunk contest was kind of in concert with all of the events. And the G League dunk contest is awesome because you get dudes in there who, uh, you know, th they don't really have the requisite rounded NBA skills to be regular NBA players. And so they're just like full on dunkers as like a profession. I think of like DJ Stevens as a guy who really stands out as like, yeah, his pretty notable career, but uh, it actually is the most notable career because he's the best dunker I've ever seen. Um, and that's really all that matters if you're a basketball player. Frankly, he should be in the Hall of Fame. Um, but bring back the G League dunk contest and make that part of the festivities as well, maybe on Rising Stars Night. Because um, more dunk contests is good to me, Katie. Do you like the idea of making the – they do this sometimes with the uh, Pro Bowl for the NFL players where they have like them do non-football activities, like there's like paintball and stuff. Would you like the idea of like a, a, a bocce ball tournament or no. something like that for the NBA players on All-Star Weekend to compete no. in? No. Like for fun? Because then... The well, let's just say it replaces the game. Uh, <laughs> and you have some sort of big event. Uh, maybe it's like dealer's choice, top vote getter's choice of game that they play instead of the actual basketball game. No. Mm. Um, I'm trying to think. Have a game that I would enjoy watching. Not really. <laughs> paintball. You don't want to see a little a badminton, like doubles badminton. I'm sure tournament. they would enjoy paintball, considering mm -hmm. how many uh, love to play Call of Duty. Oh yeah, yeah. So maybe that would be fun and. Yeah, we're seeing a different side of Devin Booker if that one comes out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> More emotive side, that's for sure. Um, yeah. But I don't really want to. I don't. Nah. <laughs> Totally fair. Um, yeah, All-Star Weekend is going to be fun. It's going to be a great time. Uh, thanks to everyone who sent in questions. Very you much had a good question yeah. from Josh that I did want to I did want to get oh, to. And you did, did it. I? Yeah, oh, it's not yeah, about All-Star. But I thought one. it was You're a good right. question. Yes, yeah, so let's get to it. This is from uh, young Josh. Uh, not Josh Hart. Our friend Josh Hart, who is in fact Josh Hart. Despite <laughs> what his Twitter handle is going to tell you. Not the basketball player, the former guest of this podcast. <laughs> he asks... What's been your favorite piece of writing either of you have read this week? Could be poetry, could be the GQ feature on, Co on Coppola. Uh, who do you got? What's your favorite piece of writing you've read this week, Katie? You've prompted this question. You must have a pretty juicy answer here. I have two. Um, and then, the, so the first one is, it is basketball related just because some people, that's all they want to read. So mm -hmm. there's like DeMar DeRozan uh, profiles coming out of the wazoo, I noticed this oh, week, yeah. which is yep. great for DeMar. But, you know, you got to wade through some of them. Maybe you don't want to read them all. But mm -hmm. uh, Colin McGowan wrote a really excellent 
um it's not really even like a profile i'd say it's like a i don't know it's like a it's just like a very interesting exercise and, and extrapolation of considering demar de rosen and like mm -hmm. what he means to us as fans and to like the larger nba canon that's yep. on real gm and not basketball related um the latest issue of the paris review uh i've just been working my way through it on my way to swimming commuting back and forth and mm -hmm. i finally finished the interview with author gary indiana uh, and i would really recommend it and i would really recommend any writing by gary indiana if you're looking for a book to pick up and read that has to be a pen name right like named after the he town. changed his name no, okay, he changed okay. his name, um, but he changed his name when he was super young. He changed his name gotcha. before he was like an author. He was a bit, he was like a actor, um, like a play mm. act. What do you call an act? A stage actor. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> For a little while. Um, yeah, it's a pretty good name. Yeah, um, I feel like I don't have a lot for this question, Katie, because I I don't know if I've read anything this week. I've just been uh, cranking out podcasts and uh, playing Hollow Knight. Uh, that's kind of taken up my life. Is uh, if you haven't played Hollow Knight on the Switch or at least or whatever, I think it's on other platforms too. But uh, that game, there's some reading in it. There, there's uh, there's cutscenes and characters you have to talk to. I am, however, going away for the weekend, and usually that's when I'll do my reading. Is when I'm away, the internet is not clouding my my brain i don't have my switch to take up four hours of my night every night uh and so i will be taking with me dude uh <laughs> i gotta finally dig oh, into you're this in bad for boy. a weird one have you I, read it i'm looking forward to i have not read read it before i really want to see the movie and it feels like a book i will like so i'm excited for it i'm also it's probably going to finish times weirder than the <laughs> movie <laughs> Yeah, I'm also going to probably finish Boomtown uh, from Sam Anderson, a wonderful book about Oklahoma City and weather patterns and uh, lots of wild stuff. So th those are my two reading options for the weekend um, as I catch up on my week of being a total uh, moron. Just uh, hey, who does reading when you can play video games? Hey, that's that, that's me, baby. Uh, anyway, we will wrap up the show there before i do any more weird italian american accents and uh <laughs> close out the show katie anything you'd like to promote for the good people out there no um i have i wrote a lot i wrote too much stuff last week so you can find it on dime you can find it on daily beast um you can find it at basketball feelings um and probably other places oh yeah sports canada i think that's it Excellent. Uh, I will also plug a thing that we did together yesterday, which yes. is a uh, basketball. Uh, yes. We did one of my favorite episodes in a long time because you came up with a uh, Love is Blind NBA spinoff version of the game. I did some method acting as Rob Polinka and other uh, love searching GMs on the buyout market. It was a lot of fun. You can go find that podcast on all your favorite podcast apps and go subscribe to us on Patreon patreon.com slash a basketball with two H's in the, uh, uh, but that's going to do it. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. Katie, have yourself a wonderful all-star weekend and, uh, taking it all. Let, let's just really hope for some just pomp and circumstance and props in the dunk contest. Give me some props. That's all I really need. A mascot or two. You've got two max mascots in Cleveland between, uh, Sir CC and what's the other one? Oh God. The dog. The dog, Moon Dog, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe they make some appearances and kind of climb up the mascot ranks. That would be cool. Um, but we will uh, break it all down next week. Just a, a programming note: Monday, no episode. I'll be away, and uh, it's a holiday up here, so I'm just going to take advantage of that, considering it's All Star Week. And then Tuesday, we'll be dropping a roundtable episode with the hosts of the teams in the Raptors range in the Eastern Conference: John Corrales from Locked On Celtics, Adam Armbrecht from Locked On Nets. Uh, Doug Branson from Locked On Hornets and uh, Brad Rowland from Locked On Hawks. We'll be doing a little roundtable, teen up the back part of the season and the race for the sixth seed in the Eastern Conference. That should be a lot of fun. All those guys are great. All, I think, former guests of the podcast. So you should get ready for that. And uh, that's it. We'll talk to you again on Monday. Go make your second listen of the day, Locked On Bets, as they are getting you ready for all of the gambling action ahead of All-Star Weekend and more. And until then, we will talk to you on Tuesday with another episode of Locked On Raptors. Bye-bye.